Good morning, uh, students. Today we are going to study an ethological exercise uh, to see whether gravity of the earth is a unique stimulus to a certain organism, and here the model organism is earthworm. Earthworm is considered to be the first farmer of the world. We already know that earthworm increases the soil fertility by aerating and also by its uh, feeding behavior. That is, it's a detrigon, so it feeds on dead and decaying and the Parcelly decomposed parts of the soil and it really helps in fertilizing the soils rather. So we'll try to see whether earthworm is uh, positively stimulated by the gravity of the earth or the gravitational. We already know that it's not only the animals but the plant also shows uh, this kind of uh, geotactic movement. For example, when we talk about a particular plant, potted plant, we put in a horizontal manner. They visited a person tried to move towards the light and the root always tend to move towards the ground. The same is the case, earthworm, it lives in burrows, it lives under the ground and they always tend to find its perfect habitats in the ground. So, uh, so in order to see whether the gravity is really acting as a stimulus to these animals, we have a very interesting model. So let's see this particular model. Uh, first of all, we need a cardboard paper of 10 inch by 10 inch, or you can do a smaller one too. And what we do is, this is the base, low portions, and just about it, 5 centimeters from below, we draw a straight line. So what we will do is, we will release this particular earthworm and try to see how many of them is crossing this 5 centimeters mark. So if that animal is moving, if an earthworm is moving above the uh, above this line, then we say that it is positively geotactic or uh, the geotaxis movement is uh, shown and if it not, if it is not, we will not consider it. And how do we do it? So we have this kind of a models having uh, different angles. So the pose is a 30 degree and this is a 60 degree like this. So like this you can have uh, the 45 degree also, 30 degree also, 60 degree angular nature and try to find out whether that is moving or not. So what we do is, suppose this is the uh, filter paper, I will be releasing the earthworm here and uh, this particular, this is 60 degree. So we try to put in the slanting positions here and you release 10 of this particular earthworm of the similar size and uh, you take it out from the ground or you get it from the supplier and let it acclimatize in a particular area then you release those particular individuals here and see how many of them are moving above this particular line and how many is trying to move above this line and how many of them are not moving. So out of 10, you just have to find out how many of them are crossing, how many of them are not crossing in a stipulated time scale. Uh, we make this a cardboard paper because it's slightly rough and it, the color is earthy in nature. So it mimics the natural conditions of the earthworm. That is the reason why we use it. So like this, you can keep on changing the angle. So this is slightly steeper and this is slightly less like this. So, so what we generally find here is suppose if you keep it like this, then it is zero degree. And all the arrows are crossing, okay? they are not turning back, they are crossing. So they all are showing positive. In 30, you will find 70% of them moving. Then you talk about 60 degree, there are about 30% of them will be moving. So as and when it becomes, the slope becomes steeper and steeper, you know, uh, there is a relationship in terms of the number and the percentage of the earthworm crossing the 5 centimeters mark or not. So it's a very simple exercise. We have this kind of plastic models which will be responsible for making these particular slopes at certain angles. So 0 degree is very simple. The horizontal plane 30 degree, 60, 45. Uh, so like this we have, we can exercise whether this particular animal is uh, positively zero tactic in nature or not. Here in this particular case also the exercise is not about the kinetic kind of a thing but it is a dexis. So the, the animal is moving positively towards a particular stimulus or it is negatively okay, moving away from a particular source of the stimulus. So gravity of the earth indeed is a very unique stimulus and we exactly do not know, even Nico Dinbergen was uh, very much right when we said the migration of an animal is enigmatic. 
For example, we tend to say that many of the birds that migrate at continental scale might be affected by the gravity or the constellation of the sky in the sky, like as a cue or the wind as one of the parameters. So this is a very, very interesting and magical exercise that animal is playing along with the stimulus, including the, the gravity of the earth while exercising its movement, orientations, navigations, and also in terms of the migration from one habitat to another habitat. So this is a very fundamental exercise. I just want to demonstrate how this particular exercise is done in the laboratory. So you can still improve upon this particular exercise and the way that it has been conducted. But this is one of the very fundamental exercise that can be meaningfully used to understand the zero positively moving of the earth towards the gravity of the earth. So why they are moving towards the ground? Because they get their food items, they get their habitats, their home, their shelters. They also could prevent from the predators if they are there in that particular habitat. Right? So animals moving towards a particular stimulus is associated with, with its survival importance. Thank you. Thank you so much.